Let's move on to Sir for the moment. Uh, recent research has said that the five most commonly recurring dreams are being naked in public, uh, climbing upstairs or a hill, losing your teeth, arriving totally unprepared for an exam, and flying. Mine is being charged by a bull. Judy's is being menaced by a stationary but massive wave, just sort of hanging above you, just above you. Um, I wish I could surf, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll teach you. Um, <laughs> so we got hold of Ian Wallace, who runs uh, a group, uh, something called uh, the Dream Work Organisation, which analyses the dreams of company employees to help improve their performance <coughs> at work. And we sent him up to Edinburgh to do a little bit of dr public counselling. Hello, I'm Ian Wallace. I'm a dream analyst. And I'm here in Edinburgh today to analyse people's dreams. The three most common dreams are being naked in public, your teeth falling out, being unprepared for an exam. Everyone dreams. We have to dream. It's a biological necessity. I have a dream which is um, it's a recurrent dream whereby I walk into a public toilet I sit on the toilet and then the door isn't there, or I sit on the toilet, the door is shut, I feel safe, and then I look up and there are people looking down at me from above the cubicle and I feel really very uncomfortable in my dream and very vulnerable and exposed. Any time you dream about going to the toilet, and we all do, mm -hmm. is about wanting to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. But you actually have to get rid of it in public. Right. And when you do that, to actually voice those feelings in public, it makes you feel very uncomfortable and very vulnerable. So there is something you have to voice mm -hmm. and you have to say, you have to get rid of, mm -hmm. and that has to be done publicly. So even bottling you, things up a wee bit. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. even though you're trying to appear very strong and capable on the outside, you have to let people know how you feel. Yeah. It's much better for you and much better for them. Okay, thank you. I was in this house and basically I just ran downstairs, ran out the front door onto a porch and there's basically this clothesline hanging across the porch and it seemed to have various coats I'd worn throughout my childhood. It must have been about 20. Okay, this dream's a, a coming of age dream. What you're looking at is how you've been for the past 20 years and the various guises and transformations you've come through and now you realise that you can leave all that behind. It's just strung out there for you to see. So it's just about turning from a boy into a man. It was the first time I'd moved away from home and okay. I was actually, uh, you know, living away and um, you know, it's all new to me, so it makes a lot of sense. Well, I used to have a reoccurring dream where I was trying to take off. Uh, people were running after me, and it was like an old-fashioned plane where it kind of bump, bumped along and I couldn't quite take off, and I kept trying to. And as these people got closer and closer, I then, just before, sort of seconds before they actually got to me, I finally actually took off. OK, the flying dream is about freedom and liberation. And in the dream, there's something you're trying to break free from. That's why those people are chasing you. You're trying to escape from them. And if you know you keep running and running and go faster and faster, eventually you'll take off and be free. People often ask me, why are dreams so important? The more you understand your dreams, the more you'll understand yourself, and the more you'll understand what you want to do and how to do it. <laughs> and Ian joins us now for a quick chat, because there's a couple of unanswered questions there. Firstly, the, the, the losing of the teeth. I've had that dream, and so we've oh, all had that dream. it's Why, we, why it? do we almost all of us dream that we've lost our teeth? Teeth do two things. They let you bite off chunks of your environment and cope with it and deal with it. And they also let you articulate mm. uh, how you feel and to express yourself. So if you lose your teeth, you can't cope with what's happening to you and you can't say how you feel about it. Mm. So it's usually in times of great stress that you dream of that. That's, That's true. A stress That's dream. true. That's yeah. true. Stress dream. Um, we we were talking about our own dreams earlier, and, and I, I have two particularly recurring ones. One is um, that I'm in a lift. I get into a lift in a hotel usually. It could be another building, but it's normally a hotel, and it's a very high tech speedy lift. And I never know which buttons to to press uh -huh. and I get it wrong and I arrive on a floor, it's usually a hotel, um, I either go right through the roof and sort of end up in this empty space or I usually, more usually I arrive at a floor and I can't remember the number of my hotel room and I spend ages walking around desperately trying to find it but I never do. What does that mean? The lift represents your career and because <laughs> it's usually in a hotel it's something that gives you shelter and security, but it's not your home, it's not you. Mm. So it's like you're falling upwards, you're whizzing upwards and upwards and upwards, so you're very successful, you have fame and fortune. But you want to get something beyond that, beyond the confines of your career. So that's why you're trying to find a, a number to press so you can get out. And then once you do get out, you're lost. So you, you're looking for something beyond the everyday and the material. 
So it's a very profound dream. It's about our uh, spiritual awareness coming to you. What about this massive wave that, that hangs that's around? That's a fantastic on dream. Bit, yeah. yeah. So it's a big, big tidal wave out Huge, to sea. Huge, but it's motionless. Uh -huh. And well, it, I know it's going to start coming in there. Uh -huh. Anything to do with the sea is to do with the unconscious and to do with feelings and emotions. So when you're walking on the shore, you're on the very edge of what you know for sure and what you know for certain. And you think this thing's going to come over you and completely swamp you and destroy your life and your possessions and everything you hold dear. And what it is, it's just your unconscious saying to you, I'm here, uh, please recognize me and please channel me and do something with all the unconscious <laughs> emotional energy I have. <laughs> They, so they sort of fit quite well, really, those yes. two, don't they? What about yours? Well, I, get, I have a terrifying nightmare. Um, uh -huh. I, have, I have it about three times a year. It's, it's, it can change the scenario a little bit, but it's, the dynamics are usually the same. I'm walking in the countryside, I'm happy, uh -huh. and then I get a gradual sense of foreboding that gets deeper and deeper and deeper, and I turn around a dry stone wall or a hedgerow, or climb over a stile, and there's a ruddy great bull uh -huh. in the field thundering towards me, great clods of earth coming up behind its legs, and I know I haven't got the speed or the time to get back over the fence, and it's going to charge me down. What's that about? The bull is you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Taurus. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah. and, and that's exactly the same imagery. Uh, the bull has really two meanings. One is that big raging bull where you see something and mm. you just must have it and get after it and it's very acquisitive in that Taurian manner. Mm. There's also a peaceful side to the bull where it's gently grazing in a meadow and that's how you feel when you start off in the dream, mm. that you want to have that peace and calm. But then something grabs your attention or something catalyzes you to do something mm. and that's when the bull starts and it starts to get a bit out of control mm. and that scares you. So all you have to do is stand up to the bull when it's coming towards you because the bull is you and you can control it. So the next time I go to sleep I should rehearse that for, for the uh -huh. end of that dream, say stand st and the bull will stop. It will stop. And, well if it does I'll tell you. Uh -huh. it'll start <laughs> Just very briefly because we haven't got much more time but uh -huh. what does it mean if you dream that you're meeting the Queen on your own territory <laughs> or she's ha you're having a cup of tea with her or a really intimate cosy friendly chat? It's just recognising how special you are to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because the Queen's really meant to be the most special woman in Britain. Yeah. And when she's coming in, you're just recognising the regal parts of yourself. I thought it meant that she was coming parts. on next week. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it meant she was coming on next week. Sorry, I I'd, I'd thought you might just, just finish your sentence. Um, yeah. You recognise the regal part of yourself. Yeah, yeah. and the yeah. noble part of yourself. Yeah. And just really? the fact that you're adored. Oh, I just thought she liked what, it. The last one, what does uh, it mean? When I started, I, this is a real boy's own dream. I dream uh, I'm a sniper. Uh -huh. yeah? I have a job to do and I pull the trigger, but the bullets just sort of flop out the end of the gun. Don't tell me that's such <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave it there. <laughs> You're nothing. making that up. Well, I know that. every dream you've ever had, because there's nothing more boring than people's dreams and you, other people's dreams, and you've never ever told me that one before. Too ashamed to, Judy. Too ashamed to. Thank you both. That Thanks very really much. That's great. Thanks very much, Ian.